Welcome into Ion Northeast Kansas, the podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Bruner. This is where we recap some of the top interviews from the past week on Ion Northeast Kansas, the TV show. Of course, that airs live 4 o'clock Central Time, Monday through Friday, from our WIBW TV studios in Topeka, Kansas. If you're not in our area to watch, then you can also watch a stream online at WIBW.com. I took a long weekend. If you listened to last week's podcast, you know that I celebrated my birthday over the past week. And so my co-anchor and friend and David Oliver was filling in for me on the 4 o'clock show Monday and Tuesday. He had some great guests. One of them was interim Topeka City Manager Richard Neinstead. And Richard was filling us in on some of the efforts that are underway to attract and keep good city employees. Good to see you again. Good to see you, David. Yeah, nice to see you. I'm glad you're here. Talk about a little bit about what you're doing in terms of this investment in employees and then how in turn that will benefit the citizens of Topeka. So first thing I want to stress is we have vacancies like every company has, mm -hmm. but those vacancies don't affect the quality of our service. Um, what they do is maybe slow down some things, or um, but they don't affect quality of our service. So I might just give you a, a few stats we have. Um, we. Uh, we, in the Topeka Fire, we have six positions open in public works. We have um, 16 of 40 positions mm -hmm. um, that are that are open in street division. And in, in firefighting, we've increased uh, firefighter starting to $16 an hour. In public works, public we've works increased well, yeah. it to $19 an hour. And those, that's part of the plan of trying to attract new employees. Now what we also know is that the hours they work and the benefits they get go all into that, mm -hmm. but we're trying to fill those um, vacancies. And I'm told by the Public Works Director that we're starting to get positions filled. Sure, I imagine like everybody else, it's tough to recruit and retain right now, so the, the salary is a big part of that. I know that there's a special effort underway right now that gives the city employees some benefit or some recognition, if you will. Uh, and this is the Topeka Above and Beyond Award Program, where citizens can nominate somebody who's maybe perhaps done something special. Tell me about that program. Well, I'm excited about that, because um, uh, well, hopefully what the plan is, while I'm interim here, we're going to at least get this up and running again, and we're going to be able to recognize a couple of employees. And these are people who go over and above what they're required. Now, I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, we know of an employee uh, that was out there in the heat that was helping um, helping a, uh, a citizen that went down because of the heat, mm -hmm. went out of their work day, helped them, got help for them. Um, I know of another couple of employees, which one day when I was leaving the office, they were helping a gentleman that was sitting on the curb that was over come by the heat and they were trying to get him to where he needed to go. Mm -hmm. It's those kinds of actions that are over and above uh, what you might normally do that we want to recognize. So if somebody out there sees something like you're just describing there, they can let you all know, hey, yes. I saw this or yes. this person deserves some recognition there. And then, yes. and then you all can take the appropriate action to reward that person. That's right. Just just call, uh, call the city, mention the program. Um, they will route you to either the communications department or they will route you to my office mm -hmm. and we'll take the uh, information and then we'll go from there. And we actually have a committee that looks at this. Sure. It's not just one person's eyes on it. I want to update our viewers just real quick as we, our time is waning here. You know, you retired from a distinguished career in Ottawa and you've uh, graciously stepped in to help in Topeka on the interim basis here as our city manager. I know there's a search ongoing to help yep. perhaps find our next city manager. And I, I know that's more uh, part of the governing body's uh, work, but what kind of update us on where we are in that process? Well, where they're in the process, last week they approved a contract with SGR, which is a, a firm that um, hires um, municipal officials, city managers. They specialize in interim city managers. And um, they've got that contract and they're starting their process. And I know mm -hmm. the, the first part of their process is they want, they're going to talk to all the governing body members okay. so they can find out what kind of profile to put together. Yeah, got to get the right candidate for the right, right position there, obviously. Uh, interim City Manager Richard Neinstead, good to see you again. Good to see you. And enjoy the rain out there. 
We'll, of course, be keeping you up to date on that process. David had another very important conversation this week. This is Suicide Prevention Week, and over the past weekend, the Shawnee County Suicide Prevention Coalition held its annual 5K run walk, and I was honored to take part in that and be asked to share a few words. They had their biggest crowd ever. More than 200 people turned out for the event. Monday, Felicia Glass came to the studio for Ion Northeast Kansas. Felicia is a very dynamic, compelling speaker around the area, but she she also has a lot of expertise when it comes to counseling and mental health and wellness. And she wanted to share a bit of advice with all of us on how we can take care of our own mental health and also reach out to others who might be struggling. Felicia, it's always good to see you. Always good to see you're you always as well. a, You're always a ray of sunshine when you come in. But, you know, we're talking about something really serious today, and this is Suicide Prevention Week, and there are a lot of resources out there to help people who may be struggling. And talk about some of those resources. Absolutely. So, you know, the, the primary reason why I'm here is just to remind people that it's okay to talk about it, mm -hmm. right? And so I always want to share that our primary, our first resource is one another. Mm -hmm. Being able to have real open communications about feelings and emotions, no longer feeling like we have to stuff all of that sadness or sorrow or even the thoughts about suicide. Research shows that if we talk about it more and we're, we're dealing with it, we're more likely to survive our thoughts because they won't be able to take so much control over our behavior. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in Topeka, we have lots of community resources. We have lots of individual practitioners. Um, I always tell people to use the Psychology Today website uh, because they can find exactly what they're looking for. So they can kind of handpick their therapist using that website. We have phenomenal mental health centers here as well, like Vallejo. And for children, we have Family Service and Guidance Centers. So we want people to use the resources. Our greatest resource now is right at the tips of our fingertips, yeah. right? With the 988 hotline. So if you're experiencing thoughts of suicide or feelings of suicide, there's someone on the other end of a phone who can help you. They're trained crisis counselors. Um, and managers, and we want people to use that resource. We did some reporting here at 13 News last week on the momentous first year that that yeah. program has had. Uh, some 20,000 Kansans were served by calling 988. Mm -hmm. uh, the response time here in Kansas is, I think it's 12 seconds above the national average in terms of getting somebody to actually answer that call. So what a tremendous asset that is and a new resource that is obviously needed and it's being used. Absolutely. Truth is there are about 50,000 people who lose their life every year yeah. to suicide. Our goal is to decrease that number. So my, my personal goal is to talk about mental health, talk about mental health issues, make sure that people are aware that they are not alone. We often talk about suicide from the perspective of trying to help after the fact, when in reality we can help by simply having genuine, authentic conversations with people, mm -hmm. no longer being afraid to talk about and about those feelings, those emotions, but really making mental health and our mental health status a primary conversation, so simple that it's something that we should talk about sitting at the dinner table, hanging out with our friends, feeling comfortable to make that phone call and invite someone over to really deal with their real issues. And then you and I were talking before we went on the air here about the fact that it is so much more prevalent and you know it's part of our, our 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 discussion these days it's part of the forefront you know whereas when you and i were kids sometimes people didn't talk about some of these things so it's really a great thing that we can talk about these things now and and let people know hey there's help out there and and we're here for you absolutely so for people who may be wondering you know what do we do now how do we address these issues there's a fabulous webinar that I'm going to have you post on the website it, yes. that's coming up. It's free talking about how do we talk about suicide. And the truth is, it's as simple as a conversation, mm -hmm. but we have to get comfortable and know that talking about suicide does not increase the risk of someone ending their life. We really got to talk about the idea that access is actually the, the greatest danger that we have, yeah. right? So access to lethal weapons of those sorts. So there, we have to remove those. And I was going to let our viewers know there's that, that uh, resource line there, 988, call it. It's like 911, but 988, call it from any phone. You can even text to 988 here in Kansas, which is, which is a really, really great thing. Felicia, good to see you as always. Absolutely. And we'll see you again, okay? I'll see you soon. Okay. We love having Felicia visit us. Very important information. And of course, 988, that's the number. If you or a loved one needs help, give it a call. 
anytime. And always remember, folks, no one has to walk alone. I came back to work on Wednesday and came back to the red couch. We welcomed Scott Martin from AAA to town. If you travel a lot, you might kind of look longingly at those TSA pre-check lanes and wonder, how can I get in there? What does that even involve? Or maybe you're a frequent traveler who has taken advantage of the process. AAA has an event going on in Topeka. It's going to last two weeks, and it is to help people get that process and application process started. So Scott came to fill us in on just what pre-check is. It's that longing look when you're in the line and you see the TSA <laughs> pre-check over there. No one's there and you wonder, should I, shouldn't I? For those who aren't familiar, what is TSA pre-check? TSA pre-check gets you through this, those lines a little bit quicker. Because when you go through the TSA pre-check, you don't have to take off your shoes. You don't have to take your laptops out of your bag or that the 311, the bag with mm -hmm. the liquids in it. You, if you're wearing a lightweight jacket, you don't have to take that or your uh, off or your uh, belt. So it just helps you get through security a little bit quicker. But you don't bypass security for those who are worried no. that, oh, is this going to really uh, unlock some flaws in the system? There are still things that happen. Yes, yes. You still go through a security check. You just, there's a lot of things that you would have to do in the regular security line that you don't have to do in the in the TSA pre-check line. This is not just something that you are is open to anyone. You do have to get checked out. So what mm -hmm. is that process like and what are they looking for to make sure that yes, you're a person who can be trusted <laughs> when you don't take your jacket off to go through security? Well, there when you go online to make your appointment, there's a form that you fill out and that's where it kind of starts there and then the day of the event when you come in to do your pre-check uh, with the TSA people, they're going to fingerprint you and they're going to run a background check to make sure that, hey, this person's good to go through the TSA pre-check. So they are looking at you yes. before you go there. So when the hap what happens, first of all, what is AAA Kansas hosting, AAA at the Topeka office, that will help people with this process? Well, we have an online, uh, online check-in where you can go in and make your appointment and start that initial filling out those forms. Um, and then uh, their TSA van is going to be parked right outside our office. And so the people will be right there at our store to get everybody processed through. And are these representatives of the TSA? Yes, they are. What will they all do for you that day? And what do we need to bring with us? Okay, you're going to need to make sure that you bring a valid uh, ID with you. Uh, as you're filling out the forms to make your appointment, it'll ask you what forms of identification you're going to bring. Uh, if you've had a name change, you need to make sure that you bring a certified copy of like a divorce or marriage certificate or something that shows there's been a name change. That's if it's different than what your yes, ID if, is. Yes, okay. if it's different than what your ID is. Um, and then once you're there with them, uh, they're going to go over your paperwork that you filled out online and then they'll fingerprint you and they'll send everything off to get run your background check. How long typically does it take to find out if you're approved and if you're actually going to get it? Normally it takes about three to five days to That's find out if long. you no, uh uh. Sometimes it goes longer, sometimes not, so but normally three to five days. And I want to go back to those documents again because sometimes, uh, especially if you're a woman who's gotten married and changed your name through, through, through marriage or something, it can be a little bit confusing. If I have a valid driver's license and I have a valid passport in my current name, is that good enough or do I need to bring something else that shows, well, gee, I had this other last name in the past, so now I need to bring this well, to also show or if, if that passport's in my name, am I good? Yeah. Okay, yes, yeah. <laughs> that's a short answer. I yeah. like the short answer. <laughs> I re well, I do remember, you know, when the IDs, when the real ID was, there was a lot of confusion and a lot of ladies in particular were yeah. getting a lot of extra documents. Now, but it, it is going to ask you if you've ever used another name. Okay. So you may need to go ahead and bring in that marriage certificate uh, showing that there was a name change. They'll tell you. Yeah. But if it's a passport, you should yeah. be good to go. Yeah. Okay. This isn't free. No, it's not. What is the fee and how long is that good for? It's $78 and it's good for five years. And the only form of payment that they will take is a uh, credit or debit card, uh, cashier's check, uh, certified or a certified check. And you need to provide that the day of your day appointment. Of the day of your appointment. Why is that a good investment? You know, if you're doing a lot of traveling, uh, just to kind of get through security mm -hmm. a little bit quicker, I think it would be well worth it. 
Well, that event that AAA Topeka's office is hosting starts on Monday, the 18th. It runs through the 29th. You do need to make an appointment, and those appointments are available from 9 to noon Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday. They will also be there in the afternoons from 1 to 5. AAA.com slash CSA, or I do have a direct link to the this specific event sign up on WIBW.com. So you can do that. Scott, thank you for filling us in. Also, if you're going to make an appointment, you need to get it done because they're filling up quick. There you go. We have everybody's got the first <laughs> the first note now to know to do it. Thank yep. you, Scott. Appreciate Thank you. it. So there you have it. TSA pre-check. Maybe you think it's worth the investment. If you're a frequent traveler, you know, sometimes convenience will be worth any price. We also talked a bit this week about the Alzheimer's Association upcoming Walk to End Alzheimer's events. They're taking place across the country, and we have several in Northeast Kansas. There's one in Topeka. There's another coming up in Manhattan later in the month, and then Lawrence has a Walk to End Alzheimer's as well. Margaret Hayter with the Alzheimer's Association visited to share the very personal reason she got involved in the first place. 6% of Kansans over the age of 65 have a diagnosis of dementia or Alzheimer's disease, and that number is expected to grow. People are joining together to raise awareness and money for this condition that affects so many of our loved ones. Margaret Hayden's here to tell us about this year's Walk to End Alzheimer's, and you are appropriately wearing purple, the of color course. for the day. That's right. <laughs> this is a, a great event, but I, I mentioned those statistics, and it is a little startling. How, how common is this? I mean, how many of us, and, and we know, know somebody affected? Yes, as you mentioned, very common and surprisingly more common than people might even realize because there are varying levels of Alzheimer's. So usually people are seeing it in the later stages. But we do have about one in nine people having Alzheimer's disease, and it does kill more than both prostate cancer and breast cancer combined. And the numbers continuing to grow as the population ages. Absolutely, it is, unfortunately. So what is the Walk to End Alzheimer's all about? So the Walk to End Alzheimer's is our national fundraiser for the Alzheimer's Association. It's our largest fundraising event and we hold it in over 600 cities across the United States. And locally we have them coming up in Topeka at Evergy Plaza, one in Manhattan and also one in Lawrence. Now is this like the, the hugely strenuous, like get on serious running <laughs> clothes and run a 5K or is it truly just a stroll, a walk? It is truly just a stroll. I promise I would not be managing a 5K. <laughs> um, it is a very easy one mile walk and we like to encourage all people to come out whether they even have Alzheimer's dementia or they're a caregiver or they just support the cause. So it's a very easy walk. What all happens during the day besides actually going for a walk? Absolutely. Uh, so we start out the day at um, 9 o'clock. Evergy Plaza opens up to the public. We have our sponsors there. We have some coffee and donuts. And then at 10 a.m. we have our ceremony and that's where we talk about the walk, celebrate all of our happiness of us being together, remember our loved ones who may have passed from the disease. And then at 10.15 we start our walk. Again, actually I routed it the other day and it's not quite a mile. So a nice <laughs> easy walk that starts and ends back at Evergy Plaza. You know, it is a serious topic, but y you talk about honoring and, and really celebrating our friends and our loved ones. How do you encourage people to do that through this event? So for this event, what I think is, is truly the most moving moment is we have a flower ceremony. And that is where all of our walkers, however you sign up, you get a different color flower. So if you have Alzheimer's or dementia, you have a blue flower. If you're a caregiver, you have a yellow flower. If you support the cause, you have an orange flower. And if you're like me and you've lost someone to Alzheimer's or dementia, you carry the purple flower. So during the ceremony, we ask all of those at each time, if you carry the purple flower, raise up your flowers together. And by the end, we all have our flowers raised and we can see that we're not in this alone. We are all truly here together, honoring, working towards the cure. Which is such a powerful moment. And yes. since you mentioned you'll be carrying a purple flower, what did you learn from, from your experience with your loved one, if I may ask? Absolutely. Um, I learned that you don't have to go through this journey alone. Um, and that's why I'm here working for the Alzheimer's Association now. Mm -hmm. After losing my grandmother to dementia, this is a cause very near and dear to my heart. And it means so much to me that I can give back and support others who may not know we're there, but we are definitely here to help. Well, and for people who don't know about the Alzheimer's Association, what kinds of resources do you have and where can people find those if they're out there at home having questions right now, either for themselves, wondering if what they're experiencing personally and noticing in themselves is something of concern, or if you maybe see it in a loved one? 
Absolutely, thank you for asking that. You can go to alz.org. It has all of our information there. We have a community resource finder, so you can type in your zip code and see what resources are available to you locally. And that's a huge, huge help in trying to find doctors to talk to and who to answer your questions. Oh, spreading the word, knowing the information is, is the first step in, in getting the help and support that you need. And we are grateful to the Alzheimer's Association for having the walk and you can join it as well. The Walk to End Alzheimer's is coming up Saturday, September 23rd in Topeka at Evergy Plaza. As you mentioned, 10 o'clock is the ceremony, 1015 is the walk, act.alz.org slash walk is where you can find the walk for Topeka and Manhattan's walk as well, which is coming up September 30th. So wherever you are, you have a location to be. Is there a set fee for joining this walk or are people in encouraged to raise donations? So people are encouraged to fundraise for the walk. They can create a team, have some fun fundraising events, um, but absolutely no donation or fundraising is required to come and just celebrate with us. All right, thank you so much for letting us know all about it. Thank Pleasure you. having you here. And by the way, my colleague David Oliver, who you heard in the first two interviews on this podcast, he will be emceeing the event in Topeka at Evergy Plaza. Uh, finally today, I want to share a, a fun group of people that we had in the studio. John Cantrell is a champion boxer based in Topeka. Coach Damon Reed is who is training him for an upcoming title match that he has going on. But he's adding a little bit of a very extra special twist to this. John met Jerry Hudgens a while back. Jerry Hudgens is the founder of Soul reason it's a nonprofit that provides new shoes to area kids so his upcoming fight is going to be used to assist soul reason using his hands as it were to put shoes on the feet of area children all three of them john damon and jerry joined us in the studio to catch up thank you for having us. we've got john in the middle so everybody can kind of keep him under control <laughs> and you're here jerry because this is the most important part of the whole story soul reason what is your organization uh soul reason was established in uh, 2016. Uh, we give new sneakers to needy kids in the community and we just uh able to show the love of christ through a simple pair of sneakers uh, since 2016 we've given away over 8,000 pairs of sneakers amazing and uh, it's been a pure joy to be able to see these kids faces when we get sneakers to them and John's helping us out with what we do. Yeah, John, how'd you get hooked up with this cause? <laughs> Jerry, I don't remember, man. <laughs> I have no idea. It's actually 2030 Club, how we hooked up. Oh, yeah. Jerry, uh, Jerry reached out to me at some point in time and was like, hey, man, or I don't, I don't remember how we met at something, some sort of fundraiser, and Jerry's mm -hmm. like, hey, would you want to come be Iron Man and do stuff for the kids? So he started inviting me to the different events where he'd hand out his shoes, and we just kind of became partners. And now here you are. You've got a fight coming up yep. next weekend, is it? Next Saturday, the 23rd. How big of a deal is this fight? Uh, this is for the American Boxing Organization heavyweight title, so it's, it's big. It's a pretty big deal. It's big for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you decided to use this, though, to give back to Jerry. How are you doing that? So 10% uh, of all my ticket sales, and then a lot of my donors are simply writing Jerry checks. <laughs> you know, because, I, I mean, my sponsors generally share the same love for philanthropy that that I have, so mm -hmm. um, yeah, they take care. They they take good care of my people and, and, and what I and Topeka Auto Glass is one of them. So is, right, these are your current belts. Is this right? So this is the Kansas heavyweight okay. belt, and this is the Missouri heavyweight belt, and then we just need that need beautiful ABO heavyweight title now, belt sitting here. Damon, a lot of people are familiar with you in your own boxing career, and I know boxers. You you want your athletes to be focused on something, yeah. Yeah. focused on the fight, focused on the task at hand. Yeah. This could be considered a, a distraction for John, trying to sell tickets to raise money to help a cause while he's supposed to be focused on the fight. Why is this kind of a cool thing for you, though? Um, so I try to do my best and, and keep track of all the tickets for John because I've always done that. Like you said, I've always promoted or, or done that kind of stuff. So uh, I try to take as much pressure off. But, you know, it's, it just comes with the territory. You know, if you can't put butts in the seats, then, you know, then what good are you? I mean, you know, I mean... <laughs> Be fighting on Showtime or whatever, but uh, just these guys and this cause is just uh, it's something really, really cool. And I hope everybody can come out and see John at, on the September 23rd at Monarch Stadium in Kansas City. Obviously, you try to train an athlete to win titles, but yeah. this seems like even a more important lesson. As an yeah. athlete, what, how important is it to you to impart in the folks that you're training that, you know, the athletic part is a gift and to share that gift with others? Yeah, I mean, me and John hooking up what now? two years ago or almost so, three, yeah. almost three years. It's just been a complete 
blessing for me to have him in my life and to see what he's actually doing and working and you know and I always tried to do my part back in the day but John's just taking it to another level and it's awesome to be part of that and to help him and and uh and just to see him now from all the charity and all that but the athlete that he is and the hard work that he puts in I just don't people people do not understand the getting up at five o'clock in the morning working all day then going to the boxing gym and getting smacked around for an hour and a half and doing all that and then going home to your kid and getting an hour of sleep or you know or hour of family time you know it's a lot of it's a lot of dedication it it really is and john john gives it all he's got and i'm, I'm really proud of him and it's been fun all right john so when is the fight and how can people get tickets to support you and soul reason all right so the fight is saturday september 23rd at legends field in kansas city uh, you can get tickets by calling Dangerous Damon Reed or find the Hope Dealer, Rachel Holthouse, on Facebook and give her an instant message, and they will get you taken care of for tickets. If you can't get a hold of them and you want to be last minute, you can get them at the door. But if you get them through Damon or through Rachel, just look for her pink T-shirt. I'm sure she'll show up in a pink T-shirt for you. Amen. <laughs> uh, Damon's number was there on the screen. I'll put it on WIBW.com. And if you're interested in getting help through Soul Reason and seeing how your kids can apply for shoes, if you need some help, soulreason.net is where you can do that. Gentlemen, thank you so very much. And John, best of luck to you. Get them trained up right. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. You heard John mention they brought those belts to the studio with him. So if you'd like to see that video, see how much fun they were, and also see videos from all of the segments you just heard here or that were on all week long on Ion Northeast Kansas, we post them on WIBW.com. They are also on my Facebook page, which is WIBW Melissa Bruner. And you can go to our WIBW TV 13 YouTube channel. Click subscribe while you're there, and you can go back through all the videos we have had on Ion Northeast Kansas. Kansas. And again, it streams live every day, Monday through Friday, 4 o'clock Central Time from our WIBW TV studios on the website. Hope you have a great week. Glad you could spend a few minutes with us. We'll see you on the Red Couch.